From the air, it looks just like any other day at the fair. But on the ground, you can see how people are trying to escape the oppressive heat. I'm sure we sell a lot of water. The scorching temperatures didn't slow kids down. Their parents, on the other hand, were looking for any kind of relief. We don't want them to get overheated, and so we're trying to keep them a little cool and hats and they love water. It. One family brought a portable mister for the kids. Feels like a breeze almost. Others took refuge just down the midway. I don't know that you get used to it, you tolerate it. And almost everyone hit this company's booth getting an instant cool down with free ice cold water. Anytime that temperature gets over 95 degrees, the lines just get really full. But the best way to beat the heat was supplied by the Caldwell Fire Department. Kids of all ages found enjoyment shooting off a ladder. It's way too hot. <laughs> I want to run through that. Even with hot temperatures expected through the weekend, people say they'll be back but prepared to seek out breaks from July's record heat wave. There's a lot of other things we want to see, so we'll be down here. Some nice light, light snow from last night. Shuffling through the powder. Be a great day for skiing. As inch upon inch of crunchy snow. Keep digging a hole, you'd be 100 inches deep of snow here. Has coated the Boise Basin area. Measuring and weighing the white gold. 84.5. Water officials determined we are 106% of average this year. Basically, these people are walking on 35 inches of water. Plentiful accumulation that these hillsides haven't seen since 2006. There's actually 43 inches of water in a snowpack. A year faced with flooding in the Treasure Valley. A soggy fate that is possible this spring if temps warm too fast or we see a wet spring. But water managers are focusing on the positive side right now. For farmers, recreationalists, fish and wildlife, <laughs> there'll be plenty of water this year. Hopefully for the year to come too. It's so like your bank account. You don't want it to run dry. And if the snow were cash? this bank would be loaded. Melissa Paul, today's Channel 6 News. Zipping. Head up into the hills above Horseshoe Bend <coughs> and you'll see people flying through the air. It just feels like you're soaring like a bird through the air. It's really fun. Zip Idaho is the latest spot for high altitude adventure in southwest Idaho. Ready to zip? See you down there. It's certainly not the first zip line in the state, but they boast of themselves as the longest. And the idea to build this web of wire was born out of earth-friendly ambition. I thought it would be a good, low-impact way to kind of develop my property. Property that's been in Fall's family for five generations. It's uh, nice, you know, being able to, to give myself a way, a way to make an income and, uh, and take care of the land um, instead of, you know, I think it would be a shame if we ever had to you know, sell it or subdivide it. Paul also believes green living is outdoor living and wants to let people experience that. I'd like to keep improving it, make it a nice place for people to come and enjoy the uh, Idaho wilderness, basically. Flip it on like a sash. A fun way to do so, I thought, as I suited up for a ride. So are you good with heights? Do you get nervous? No. Or so I thought. <laughs> But the tone of a voice never lies. It's a little adventure living, outdoor living, and green living all rolled into one. Lincoln Graves, today's Channel 6 News! Every week, every uh, Wednesday, Thursday, overnight, year round. That's how many times Rod Baker takes a boat full of tourists up the Snake River and into the depths of Hell's Canyon for some sightseeing, fishing, and a little bit of history. Back in the uh, late 1800s, early 1900s, uh, there were stern wheeler ships 125 feet long and 40 feet wide that navigated this river. But Rob is delivering more than just a history lesson. They do have a registered mailbox and Walmart's having a sale this week. He makes 17 stops bringing mail and supplies to families and businesses hidden in some of the most remote and rugged landscape on earth. It's so hard to get in here. The only way you're going to get in here is with a boat. Joni Bullock, you know, eggs and eggs and milk every week. She raises two boys and homeschools them, and the only way she's going to get her perishables, perishables in is if we bring them to her. For four years now, Rob has been jetting letters, bills, and supplies upstream to his grateful customers. There's your goodies. Hey. And your mail. And my mail. The mail patrons, they are 
the most appreciative people I think I've ever met. So this Wednesday, just like every other Wednesday, Rob and his guests will forge their way into the canyon where the owners of 17 isolated mailboxes will be waiting. Better than working for a living. <laughs> Don't tell the other mailman that though. Every year for the last 28 years, Drew Eggers has worked this farm lab. This year, he's chopping row after row of corn. There are a lot of memories out here uh, uh, from growing up, and I do think of those when I'm working out here. Steve Woodard has also poured years of hard work into the Treasure Valley soil. Onions are his crop. Boxes and boxes of them. If they're big enough, they'll be an awesome blossom at uh, Outback. This year, though, as Woodard sifts through the fruits of his labor, he can't help but think this way of life, his way of life, is dying out. The reason? <laughs> Development. Look around the Treasure Valley and you'll probably see more houses growing than crops. As property values go up, so does the incentive to trade crops for cold, hard cash. Land around here is at least worth 100000 an acre. Oh, uh, from fifty dollars to $75,000 an acre. At $50,000 an acre, Woodard could conceivably sell his family's 250 acres for $12,500,000. <laughs> Throw in a constant stream of calls and letters like this one from investors wanting to buy, and it's hard to imagine not selling the farm. Many already have. From 1997 to 2002, Ada County lost about 16,000 acres of farmland. Canyon County lost a whopping 95,500 acres. Agricultural leaders worry we're losing more than land. We are racing against the clock. Timing is of the essence. We need to find the balance between property rights, between uh, preserving a way of life. That's the tricky part. You can't force people not to sell their land. So how do you stop development from wiping out Treasure Valley Farms? There's no question it's a wake-up call. State Senator Brad Little owns this ranch off Highway 16. He's heard huge homes <laughs> popping up in his own backyard. Little thinks local government should take the lead on land planning, but says the state can play a role using water and sewer incentives to promote concentrated growth. The one thing we ought to do is try and eliminate the incentives to do the wrong thing. Above all, Little and agricultural leaders say starting a conversation will be critical to stopping the sprawl. Bring the various interests around the same table and chart a course for the future. We want to encourage growth but we just want to encourage the right kind of growth. For some Treasure Valley farmers, though, the time for talk has passed. Many, like Woodard, are already boxed in with houses, wait too long to sell, and some farmers run the risk of not being able to cash in for full property value. That's one reason Woodard has decided to give farming just a few more years, then call it quits. I guess when I'm ready to retire, it'll probably be sold to an investor and. Uh and eventually be developed. Even with a payout, leaving this life won't be easy. There's an, a, a kind of a sad feeling there that, yeah, you, three generations have invested their lives. As for Drew Eggers, he's one of the few digging in, keeping the crops. For now, at least, passing up potential millions. Property's not for sale. Uh, uh, we're going to farm it as long as we can. Sometimes memories can be worth more than money. So this year, just like the last 28 years, Eggers will hop in the driver's seat <laughs> to work the land he loves.